Hey guys, it's Jeremy here at Metal Music Meltdown, back with another video. What every today, guys, is another ranking of the albums. As you can see, it's the Mighty Opeth. Got it on my shirt here. Uh, my favorite band in metal of all time at the moment. I fucking love this band. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, Michael Elgofeld, the lead singer, is one of my metal heroes. Musical genius, in my opinion. Great composition, songwriting. Uh, all the band as a whole has great musicianships across the board. Uh, they were formed in 1990 from uh, Stockholm, Sweden. They're a progressive death metal band. Uh, but they pretty much have three eras to the band. Uh, earlier stuff is pretty much straightforward, brutal, kind of more brutal death metal. And then they had a middle section where it was kind of more progressive and they incorporated a lot more uh, melodic parts and more clean vocals. And then the latter part of their career, last four or five albums have been pretty much a throwback to the classic 70s prog rock uh, material. No more death growls at all, much more cleaner music, and uh, only clean vocals. <coughs> 13 albums in total. Before I jump into the ranking, guys, I have to tell you, I fucking love all their material. That's why it's my favorite band. Uh, I don't think they have really a bad album, in my opinion. And um, some are just better than others. Uh, but the weakest album on my list, I'd still give it probably an easy 7.5 out of 10. I love all their stuff. And when I got to the top, my number one's always been my number one. And uh, two and three, four kind of jumbled around, but I kind of based it on uh, what I have the most history with and what I kind of listen to the most and the songs I like the most from the albums at the top. So that's kind of how I rated them at the top. Uh, so let's jump right in, guys, so the video's not too long. At number 13, I have their album, uh, Pale Communion. This is one of their albums from the later period that kind of was the more uh, progressive rock sound. I think this is the weakest of the all, all of them in my opinion. Still some really good tracks on here. Um, Eternal Rain's uh, Will is good. Um, Room Above, River, a lot of good stuff on this album still. Really good vocals. Michael has some of the best clean vocals I've ever heard as well as Death, as well as death Growls. But this is just had to make my bottom of the list. Pale Communion. And at number 12, I have their debut, Orchid. Um, the first three albums I kind of picked up in this box set, which is called The Candlelight Years. It has the first three albums, Orchid, Morning Rise, and uh, My Arms Are Hearse. Um, but I'm going with Orchid, the debut at number 12. Uh, very raw sounding album, straightforward death metal. I find in this album, they seemed a little lost. They weren't, didn't really fine tune their sound yet. They were kind of experimenting a lot and uh, they didn't really find their path at this point as of yet. And number 11, we're jumping back to the more progressive rock and the later period stuff with, um, uh, sorry, with uh, Heritage, which is this one here. Um, probably my least favorite uh, album cover. The artwork's cool, but the coloring and stuff, I'm not a big fan of, uh, but pretty solid album. Um, Famine was a good, the title track Heritage, uh, The Devil's Orchid, still had some really solid tracks on here. Pretty good stuff overall, but it's one I don't go back to quite as often as some of the others. So it kind of was a little bit lower on my list at number 11. And at number 10, I went with their uh, sophomore album, uh, Morning Rise, which I'll put, a, I'll put a picture up here so you can see the album cover. But again, I have it just part of the box set. Um, so like I said, this is their sophomore album. Definitely better than the debut, a little bit more refined, a little bit more polished. Uh, they're starting to uh, creep in some more uh, progressive elements. Uh, great death brows on this one and just some, a really good album overall. And they're starting to find their path into like the, the progressive death metal sound they would, would come to have. And at number nine, <coughs> I have their most recent album, in Encada Venenum, I think it's pronounced. Um, this is their 13th studio album released in 2019. Um, really solid album. Really enjoyed this album. It's got, I can't find a copy of it for some reason, but I'll put a picture of it up here. Uh, my CDs are kind of a mess. I was still have to buy shelves. So I was trying to dig through them, trying to find them all. I couldn't find the last release. Uh, but really good songs in this album. Really has a throwback to the 70s vibe. Really beautiful arrangements. Great melodic parts in the instrumentation. Great clean vocals. The songs take you on a journey. 
And uh, yeah, just a really solid album, really like it. And at number eight, I have their third studio album, uh, My Arms, Your Hearse. In my opinion, this is the best of the early era for stuff. They've kind of, this is where they kind of really found their kind of progressive death metal sound. Um, some really good tracks on this album, such as uh, the instrumental, instru uh, instrumental pr uh, prologue is really good. Uh, let me see here, the song When is really good. Damon Corner is really good. Karma is good. Just the whole album is really solid. A progressive death metal band. Really solid vocals on this one. And uh, the production is really more crisp and more refined. And at number seven, I have the album uh, Sorceress. Really cool artwork. Um, this is their 12th studio album. Uh, again, back to that kind of 70s progressive rock sound. Really solid album with songs like the title track, uh, Sorceress 2, uh, Will of the Wisp uh, is really good as well, uh, The Wildflowers, just really love this album, the arrangements are really good, really intricate guitar work on this one, and just love it. I listen to this album quite a bit from the newer, newer era albums, um, I think this is probably my favorite of the kind of old 70s progressive rock sound, really love this album, go back to it all the time. And number six, I went with uh, Deliverance, which was released in uh, 2002. Um, they released this one and then Damnation pretty much right after it. He went for like a heavy album, which was this one. And then Damnation came out right after it, which is like a soft, kind of a really soft album, a completely different flip, but a really cool idea. Uh, this is a super heavy album. Really good songs in here. Wreath, uh, Deliverance, Fair Judgment. Really, really good stuff on this one. Really aggressive. Just really good songs. Flows really well through the album. The uh, order of the tracks is really good. Instrumentation is top notch in this. Again, really intricate guitar work and just beautiful, heavy music. And for number five, I went with the one that came out right after it, which was Damnation. Beautiful album. I fell in love with this album as soon as I heard it. Just really beautiful compositions, more mellow, really kind of chill music, but so beautiful. The composition in their music is insane. Some really good acoustic stuff in here. Experimentation with the um, time signatures. And I can't get over how, just how beautiful this sounds, this album. If you really want an album that kind of takes you away and just is really pleasing to the ears, the sonically, Listen to this album, you'll, you'll love it. And number four, I went with Ghost Reveries. Pretty plain um, artwork, but uh, in my opinion, a classic album by the band. Uh, this was their eighth studio album released in 2005 with songs like Ghost of Perdition, um, Hours of Wreath, uh, Beneath the Mirror, Atonement, just the Grand Conjuring is, Conjuration, sorry is one of their monster hits as well. Just some really solid tracks in here. Some of my favorite songs from the band. I think this is the deluxe edition, yeah. That has like the bonus DVD and everything's pretty cool. Uh, still listen to this album all the time, at least once or twice a month. And it has some some of their most classic tracks on here. Uh, no denying it's, it's a masterpiece and it had to make the top of the list. And I have it number four. And top three, in my opinion, albums are Deserving to be in the top, like, you know, 50 to 100 album, metal albums of all time. At number three, I went with Still Life. Maybe my favorite artwork from them of all time. It's so, so beautiful looking. The color scheme, red and uh, black, I just love it. I, I almost wanted to get a tattoo of this on my arm, like a, like a three-quarter sleeve. I eventually want to get the Opeth, uh, if not the word, like at least the O as a tattoo, but I haven't got that yet. But some of the most epic songs in here, The Moor is on this one as well. Uh, Serenity, Painted Death. Um, let me see here. Moonlapse, Vertigo, like just some really good stuff on this album. Really heavy, really death metal with a lot of melodic elements and just an all time classic in their catalog. If you don't have this album, pick it up. It's a must have, you'll love it. And at number two, I went with Watershed, uh, probably their most brutal album of the whole discography. This was released in um, 
uh, sorry, this is their ninth studio album. I'm not sure of the exact, oh, 2008. Uh, this was actually my introduction to the band. I, I kind of got into the band much later. Uh, and then I went back and get, bought all their stuff. <coughs> but I fucking love this album. Some of my favorite uh, heavy tracks on this one, Air Apparent, uh, Burden, Porcelain Heart. Fucking amazing album. Like I said, the most brutal of all their albums. It's got those really deep, deep guitar riffs. Really headbanging kind of stuff. Brutal. Um, Air Apparent, it goes from this fucking brutal, menacing death metal. And then it transitions into this really flowing melodic beautiful composition and the contrast between the two just makes it amazing That's why i fucking love this band every time you listen to them it's like they take you on a journey they, they transition from super brutal and heavy to the most most beautiful melodic music you've ever heard and uh the composition is just um, blows my mind every time and uh, that's why I love them. A lot of people didn't like when they switched over to the more just progressive rock sound later on in the career, but I still fucking love it. Um, I find it's the same experience. They take you on a journey, but just in a different way. It's just more rock related and they don't have the more contrast between brutal and light, um, but it still takes you on the journey in the same way, just with a different kind of vibe in the music. And guys, if you don't already guess what was number one, this might be a little cliche, but fucking Blackwater Park, uh, this is my second favorite metal album of all time, right behind Rainbow Rising. I fucking love this album. This has most of their like big songs like Lipper Affinity, Bleak, Harvest, Drapery Falls. The title track is my favorite opus song of all time, but this one album alone is like a greatest hits. Like five of the songs are just bangers and um, you know, live live staples in their set i don't they don't do as much growls anymore in their live set i've only seen them i think i've seen them live like three or four times but that was more, a little bit while ago um but yeah fucking amazing album really cool artwork really kind of gloomy looking uh, fits the album perfectly but like i said with uh songs like leper affinity bleak harvest drapery falls in the title track this is a fucking monster of an album i listen to this album at least two or three times a week and uh, Blackwater Park itself, the song, without a lie, I've listened to daily, probably for the last at least five to ten years. Like, I can't remember when I first kind of started that trend. But I listen to Blackwater Park without a lie on a daily basis. It's that fucking good. And, uh, yeah, if you guys don't know this album, I know if you're a metalhead, everyone knows this album. But if you don't, fucking check this out. You'll love the band. You'll fall in love with it right away. My second favorite metal album of all time. Killer, killer, killer album. Okay, guys, that's my ranking for the Mighty Opeth. Uh, let me know down below what your top would be or list your ranking down below as well. And if you enjoyed the video, guys, check out my other rankings I've done. I'm starting to do more of these. I've really enjoyed going back, revisiting uh, albums. Opeth was a little different because I listened to their stuff all the time anyways. But if you go to my uh, playlist, I've done Slayer, uh, Metallica, uh, Iron Maiden, uh, Merciful Fate. I've done quite a few of them so far and I'm kind of working on doing some other bands. Um, so stay tuned for those. And I appreciate you guys uh, doing the, give me the click and the view. And until next time, guys, keep it metal.